Hello and welcome to the third vlog of the Ginger Knot and Travelling Cosmical. I am here at the National Air Museum in York. So it's quite a special vlog as for the first time ever I now have my coffee cup. I do hope you can enjoy today's vlog and come on for the ride. So a bit of a panic station's moment there. Got the train from Stockport to Doncaster and was due to get a train directly from Doncaster to York. However, I needed a seat reservation to go on the train and I didn't have one. There wasn't another seat reservation on a train up to York till half five this afternoon. So I'm kind of going inwards to go back out again. So I'm going over to Leeds and then over from Leeds up to York. So hopefully I shouldn't be too late but uh, I'll give you another stage report when we get to Leeds. So, just got to Leeds. Um, we now need to get on a Transparent Express train which will take me all the way to York from Leeds. Quite the morning. <laughs> What's meant to be quite a routine trip has turned into, well, anything but. But we're going to get there a little later than planned. But as long as we get there, I'm really not that bothered. of the National Railway Museum. Currently open is the Great Hall. The North Shed is currently closed. The Station Hall is currently closed as well as the South Yard as well. So this is part of the National Railway Museum. Given the current situation, it's still currently closed. Imagine what it's like on a normal day. So, Number 4468, otherwise known as the Mallard. The fastest steam locomotive in the world. 126 miles an hour. Quite the feat for 1938. Now this train, even to this day, still holds that record. But unfortunately, we'll probably never ever see it run. Because the Mallard still has a fault. It has a cracked boiler. Which hasn't been fixed. But it still deserves its place in history as one of the greatest feats of British engineering. In its LNR royal blue guise with red wheels. Made just down the road in Doncaster. L and the R are still proud of their Doncaster roots to this day. 
because when I went on Castle Station, their brand new high speed train, the Azuma, is based out of Doncaster. But without this train, we wouldn't have the Azumas of today. So there's the steam train that did the 126 miles an hour record. And there's a simulator that I've just been on. Oh my goodness. You feel it shaking, you feel it going, and you feel like you're actually there on that day all those years ago when this train did the 126 mile an hour run. I would thoroughly encourage you to come here, pay the three pounds and do it. Currently, it's by reservation only. On any normal day, I think you can just walk up and pay the three pound and do it. I had to pay to do it, which I don't mind. But to feel that do 126 mile an hour in a simulator was amazing. I love that train so much. Now, you can't just say you've done 126 miles an hour without actually proving you've done 126 miles an hour. Which is why when Mallard did the run, it had this behind it. This was used to measure the speed of steam trains. It measured the speed of Flying Scotsman hitting 100 mile an hour, and it also was there on that day in July when Mallard did the 136 mile an hour run. And it's still in pristine condition. Let's go and have a look. So this is the inside of the car that has been pulled by Mallard when it's set uh, 126 mile an hour run. Parked next to Mallard is the Duchess of Hamilton. Looks very similar, but was made by a different company. This train was made by the London Midland and Scottish Railway in crew. Now, the reason both the Duchess of Hamilton and Mallard have a sloped front is so they could go rather quick. But, if you look closely at the front of these trains, Where those, no, where those bolts are, they can actually be removed and made to look like most other steam trains with the flat front. And as soon as you come into the Great Hall here at the uh, National Railway Museum, you'll be greeted by this. The Eurostar, which from 1996 has linked Great Britain with the rest of mainland Europe. And these trains actually hold the record, or the Great British record, for electric speed travel. These trains travel at 206 miles an hour. They were recently replaced but this one survived decommission and will spend the rest of its days here at the National Railway Museum in York. So this is the front end of the old style Eurostar trains which ran but when Eurostar opened to their recent retirement to be replaced by the newer versions. And I'll put a picture of the newer version of Eurostar in now. Now these trains here at the National Railway Museum in York are immaculately preserved. 
they look just how they would do if they were still running today. Now the National Railway Museum do have a number of exhibits. This is one of them where you used to be able to walk under and see the underneath of that train. Given the current COVID-19 situation and the potentials for bottlenecks, it's currently not in use. But this train looks exactly how it used to running up the western side of Britain now here at York they have a massive turntable which they put a train on and normally it spins round the one on it today is an old 125 HST train an old network rail livery and around the turntable you have a selection of other trains which they do put on the turntable as you can see they are in immaculate condition now when it comes to trains with history nothing beats Stevenson's rocket. Mr. Stevenson was part of a group who built a railway from Liverpool to Manchester. And that is the train he built. What I find amazing is in two, just under 200 years we've gone from making one of those to making one of those beasts. It's quite scary to think where we could actually be in another 200 years. Nine, triple two, zero. Evening star. Until very recently, the last ever built steam locomotive in Britain. Built in Doncaster. Now, I'm just over six foot three. So there's the top of the wheel, and there's the bottom of the actual train. And I fit right underneath it. Just gives you an idea of the scale of these things. And it even has the old British Rail crest on it. Here's a look inside the cab of Evening Star. Now this train, Merchant Class, is a little bit different from all the others. Why you may ask? Because it shows you the innards of a steam locomotive. She put coal in there and it would drive the train forward. Now, the National Railway Museum in York houses some trains from other countries. The first one I'm going to go and see is from Russia. Look at the size of that thing. of how big this train is. The wheels are just slightly smaller than me. So quite big then. So there 
is a Russian steam locomotive built in 1936. In just under 70 years, we've gone from building something like that to building one of those. So this is the Shinkansen bullet train. Opened in 1964, they still run to this day linking all of mainland Japan. And I've got to say, if I ever get to Japan, regardless of the cost, I'm getting on one of these things. Now, you can normally go on the Japanese bullet train, but given the current government advice, it's currently closed. But it is still a wonderful piece of Japanese engineering which still runs to this day carrying thousands upon thousands of passengers a year. And the thing about Japanese public transport is it's never ever late. And if it is you get some of the railway company that explains to your workplace or manager why you were late. Now, imagine if British transport could be as good as that. So, as part of the restrictions, the North Shed is closed until further notice. Then they can sometimes see trains getting restored. So in 1938, Nigel Gresley built the Mallard to travel 126 miles an hour. In 1996, the British built these, which to this day hold the British speed record for rail travel at 206 miles an hour. And I've got to say, that just shows how quick the Mallard actually was. So in the space of nearly 60 years, we've gone an extra what? 80 mile an hour? I just think that the Mallard's record will stand the test of time. And it just shows just how good Sir Nigel Gres Gresley was at building trains. Now, the British and the French have these. The Japanese have that. Now that is in sh a Shinkansen, which translates into English as bullet train. Now the bullet train can travel at 200 miles an hour. So in a game of top trumps when it comes to speed, the British win. The only difference is they go underwater and these connect most of Japan. Now I hope one day I am lucky enough to go on one of these things which now look like that. So it just shows man want to go fast. And we build things to go fast. Because I know of a train that doesn't have wheels, coal, or electricity powering it that goes faster than any train in this building. The only problem is I would need to go to China to go on it. And at this moment in time I don't have the money or the ability to get to China to go on that train. I just hope one day I do get the chance to go on it. The training question? It's called a maglev. How it runs is kind of given away in the title. It's run 
by magnets. I don't quite know how fast it can go, but I know it's faster than most of the trains in here. Well, that Eurostar train I showed you earlier, without one of these, that's all narrower than Bill. Now, at the front of one of these would have been a tunnel boring machine attached to the other end. Now, the channel tunnel is, is nearly 30 years old. But amazingly, the tunnel boring machines that built the channel tunnel are still under the English Channel. Because where exactly would you put such a massive piece of machinery? So they buried it under the sea for the rest of time. So this is a post office train. It ran in one of the major sorting offices for the Royal Mail. Generations of these ran all the way up to the closure of the post office train line in 2003. However, to this day you can still ride part of the closed post office railway at the post office museum and they operate that as a tourist attraction. I'll put a link to their website down below. Now here at the National Railway Museum, apart from the Great Hall that I'm in now, there's quite a few other places that are normally open. However, considering the current health situation with COVID-19, quite a lot of them are closed, as well as some of the interactive things that are there for you to try and do. For example, the North Shed. Now, when I last came here, Flying Scotsman was being put back together. Thankfully, that's now been completed, and it was actually completed by a workshop near the East Lancashire Railway, which was at last week, and I'll put a link to that video down below. So there's the Great Hall that I've just been in. Uh, that has the Mallard and Duchess of Hamilton in. The North Shed is over there, which is closed. That's part of the North Shed. Normally there was a gantry where you could overlook the East Coast Main Line to see the trains go through all the way up to Edinburgh. Unfortunately, as the North Shed is closed, can't do that today. So I'm just going to walk through now to another section, which I think is closed, but still, it'd be nice to have a look into it. You can still see into the hall here, which has a few trains in and a restaurant when it's all open. And as you can just see there, there's a royal a train there with the royal standard on. So after a busy day. Here at the Nassau Railway Museum, there's always a gift shop for the train enthusiast and I to get some merchandise. So this bridge here, there's an ordinary bridge in a British railway station. However, it's not. There's a scene in Harry Potter where Hagrid and Harry Potter walk across a bridge at London's King's Cross. However, it's not at King's Cross, it's actually here in York. And it was that bridge. So, just a little bit of history for you there. So, that's today's vlog at the National Railway Museum in York. I do hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you wouldn't mind, please like the video, comment below and also subscribe to the channel as it really does help a lot. In the comments below, please advise this to where you'd like to see me go next, or if you've got any suggestions. All being well, next week's vlog should be at Woodford Aerodrome. I do hope you enjoyed today's vlog, and I hope to see you there. Thanks so much.